Welcome to Peers RVA's online class. The lesson today is starting and joining conversations. As you go through the lesson, feel free to pause the presentation in order to talk to your social coach, ask questions, or practice the skills being presented. One way to make new friends is by talking to the people we're trying to get to know better. Teens are often given advice about how to do this. Unfortunately, the advice you get is often wrong. We are told to go up and introduce ourselves. People might think that is random and weird. Instead, we need to talk about how to get to know others better. One way you can meet new friends is by joining the conversations of teens that you're trying to get to know better. We call this slipping into a conversation. It's called slipping in because it should be done slowly and casually with very little disruption to the person whose conversation you're joining. Once you slip into a conversation, you can begin to trade information and find common interests. These are not the steps for slipping into a group of teens we know well. With friends we know well, we can just walk up and say hello. There are a few ways you can tell if you're accepted in a conversation. Think about it and discuss it with your coach. How can you tell when you're accepted in a conversation? There are some very concrete ways to know whether somebody really wants to talk to you or not. There are signs we need to, to be looking at to assess if we've been accepted into a conversation. The first is, are they talking to me? A good sign is that they're talking nicely and asking questions. A bad sign would be giving short answers and not asking any questions. The next is, are they looking at me? A good sign is, is if they're making eye contact and smiling or nodding their head. A bad sign is they may be rolling their eyes or making faces. And finally, are they facing me? A good sign is if they make room for you in the circle and face you. A bad sign is that they close the circle or turn away from you. You may have heard of the saying, giving someone the cold shoulder. That means literally their body is turned away from you. So make sure that their body is turned towards you, they are looking at you, and they are talking to you. Let's think back to session two about starting a conversation. It's important that we share the conversation because it gives everyone a chance to speak. Through trading information, you're able to find a common interest. Asking open-ended questions leads to more conversation and asking follow-up questions keeps the conversation going. Listen to your friend when they are talking so that they know you care about what they're saying. Be more serious when first getting to know someone because they don't understand your humor yet and may think you're making fun of them. Make sure that you have good body boundaries, remember about an arm's length away, voice control is important, and eye contact. Some social errors that people make when starting conversations is that they become an interviewer, just asking lots of questions, or a conversation hog. They don't let the other person talk. They also may be repetitive when they say the same thing over and over or talk about the same topic all the time. Lastly, getting too personal at first may make someone feel uncomfortable. Now, let's take a moment to watch the role play and think about what they're doing wrong. Hey, do you ever go roller skating? What? Do you go roller skating? No. Why not? You should go. Okay. It's really fun. I go like every weekend. Sweet. There's this new skate park that just opened up. I'm trying to watch something right now, so... Oh, well, I'm just saying. It's really fun. They have, like, a student night every Thursday. Cool. You should definitely go. Okay. The first step for starting an individual conversation is to casually look over to let them know that you're interested in talking to them. Don't stare at them because that might make you seem cre creepy. Using a prop makes it seem like you're focused on something else. A prop could be something like your phone or a book that you're looking at. Step three is to find a common interest because that's how you make friends. 
If you don't have anything in common, it may diff be difficult to carry on a conversation. Step four is to mention the comp common interest. You can make a comment about it, ask a question, or give a compliment. An example of this is maybe somebody's wearing a shirt of a place that you visited. You might mention that. Or maybe someone um, is taking a class with you and you could mention something about something that's going on in class. All right, step five, trade information. Trading information allows you to get to know each other. Step six, assess interest by reading their verbal and nonverbal cues. Are they looking at me? Are they facing me? And are they talking to me? Based on this assessment, you'll be able to determine if the person is interested in talking to you. The last step is to introduce yourself if you feel comfortable. Take a moment to watch the role play and think about what they're doing right. Oh my God, I love that song. Yeah, me too. This is the new video that just came out today. No way! I'm dying to see that. Yeah, it's so good. That's awesome. Have you ever seen her in concert? I have. I actually have tickets for her upcoming concert. No way! The one that's coming up in two weeks? Yeah, it's gonna be so great. That's so cool. Have you ever seen her perform? No, I wish. I really want to. Oh my gosh, she's amazing in concert. You need to see her. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm Alina. I'm Jordan. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. We're now going to be talking about how to join a group conversation. But first, let's take a look at the role play to, to determine what they're doing wrong. Think about how to join a group conversation and social errors for joining group conversations. Hey Jordan, you'll never guess. I saw Gabe at my favorite sushi restaurant this weekend. No way, what restaurant was it? Um, just the one right around the corner. Oh, I've been meaning to try that place. Yeah. Yeah, it's so close by. I felt bad that I'd never gone, but I went and it was so good. Nice, what did you guys get? I got the spicy tuna with crispy rice. Mm, yeah. yeah, it looked awesome. Have you guys just... ever been roller skating? Sorry, um, I just got the regular salmon. There's roll. this new skate park that just opened up. Um, it's I'm really sorry. fun. What did you get? Um, just the salmon roll. It was oh, plain. They so have a Thursday good. night student night. A lot of people go to it. I've been meaning to go there. I yeah. really wanted to try it out. It's really, yeah. really fun. There's also this other place by the beach that I've been roller skating. I'm sorry, what? What would you get if you went? It's really cool. I it's like right by the water and lots of people <sighs> go. Now let's discuss the steps for joining a group conversation. The first step is to watch and listen to the conversation. You need to know what they're talking about before you join and whether you have something to contribute to the conversation. If you don't know what they're talking about, you will just interrupt the conversation. You also need to watch and make sure that you know at least one of the people in the conversation because it makes joining a conversation easier if you know at least one person. In order to watch and listen, you'll need to move a bit closer to hear what they're saying. It's important not to get too close, though, because they'll think you're eavesdropping and they may think you're weird. You'll also want to make sure they're talking nicely to each other, because if they're not being nice to each other, then they're not likely to be nice to you. You should avoid conversations where teens are teasing or making fun of each other. Instead, try a different group. We also need to listen to make sure they're not talking about things we don't understand because we can't contribute to the conversation if you don't understand what they're talking about. While you're listening and watching the conversation, it's helpful to use a prop like a phone, gaming device, or a book to make it look like you're focused on something else. Then find a common interest. The best conversations to join are those where we share a common interest because it's easier to talk about things you understand and like. Friendships are based on common interests, so if we're trying to make friends with new people, it helps to have things in common. While you're watching and listening to the conversation, 
If the group notices you, it can be good to show that you're interested in what they're saying. You might smile faintly when it's relative or shake your head when agreeing. This shows that you're in agreement with what they're saying and that you're interested in what they're talking about. Wait for a pause before joining the group because you don't want to interrupt the conversation. Join the conversation by mentioning the topic, making a comment about it, or asking a question that shows that you know what they're talking about. You can also bring over an item that's relevant to the conversation. Next, you want to assess interest. As a reminder, that means, are they looking at you? Are they facing you? And are they talking to you? A bad sign that the group may not be interested in you joining the conversation is if they're not looking at you. They turn their body away from you, and they may continue to talk to each other instead of including you. A good sign that they're interested in you joining the conversation is that they're looking at you, their body is facing you, and they may have opened the circle to let you in, and finally they're talking directly to you. The last step is to introduce yourself if you want. Introducing yourself means telling people that you do not know what your name is. Now that we've gone over the steps, take a moment to watch the video and think about what they're doing correctly. So Jordan, you'll never guess I saw Gabe at my favorite sushi restaurant this weekend. Nice! What restaurant was it? Um, just the one right around the corner. Oh, I've been meaning to check that place out. Yeah, it's so close by and I'd never gone, but I went and it was really good. Cool. What did you guys get? I got a spicy tuna roll and I loved it. You got the spicy tuna roll? That's what I always get. Yeah, how good is it? It's so good there. Have you guys tried the rainbow roll there? I haven't. I haven't. No, I actually got the salmon roll. Oh, okay. That's good too, but yeah. the rainbow roll is like their specialty. Cool. cool. Yeah. If you were going to go, what'd you get? I love the California roll. It's my favorite. I've tried that one there, actually. It's really good. Oh, nice. nice. To keep it simple before we practice, here are the steps. First, watch and listen while using a prop, identify the topic, and find a common interest. Second, move closer. Third, wait for a pause. Fourth, mention the topic. And finally, introduce yourself. Remember, don't try to join conversations that you know nothing about. I mean, you don't know what they're talking about, and you have nothing to contribute to the conversation. If um, there was a conversation going on about um, thermodynamics, I probably wouldn't join just because I'm not that interested and I really don't know a whole lot about it. I know some things, but not enough to join a conversation. And people who are talking about that probably would not make good friends for me because it's not really a common interest. On the other hand, if there was a group talking about history, I'm very interested in history and I know some things, so I might have something to contribute to that conversation and I would want to join. So make sure that you're listening before you try to join a conversation and join conversations where you have something to, to contribute and you know a little bit about the topic they're talking about. With a lot of us currently stuck at home, group conversations may be held online, such as using Zoom. If you're unfamiliar with Zoom, it is a platform where group conversations can be used via the computer and webcam. The steps are similar when joining a group conversation online. First, watch and listen while identifying the topic and finding a common interest. Identifying the topic will allow you to contribute relevant information to the conversation. Also, finding a common interest is the base for forming friendships. Wait for a pause so you're not interrupting the conversation. Mention what they're talking about to keep the conversation on topic and to avoid interrupting the flow of conversation. Lastly, introduce yourself by telling people your name. Now it's time to practice this skill. You can use your social coach to practice joining a group conversation online, or if you happen to have several family members in the house, um, have them talk about something and uh, see if you can join the conversation using the steps that you have learned through this lesson. This has been the lesson on starting and joining conversations. 
I hope that you'll practice the skills you've been taught today so that you can use these skills in a real-life situation. Thanks for your attention today. I'll see you next time.